Good, good morning everyone, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. Eyes on the road, hands on the wheel. But I can still sideways look at you every once in a while. Well, I'm off thrifting, and yes, you know, it's pouring rain two days in a row and only about 45 degrees. It got cold fast. Anyway, enough about the weather. What did Will Rogers say? Everybody talks about the weather, but they never do anything about it. And hopefully this morning, my nemesis cannot find her plastic folding, folding accordion rain hat. And she's late. And we'll get the good stuff. We'll see. But I'm taking you with me. Stay tuned. It's the old curiosity shop. In the rain. Well, let me tell you, I am excited with this. Do you know what it is? Can you recognize the shape of the glass? I knew what it was when I saw it, and boy, it's going to go right in the cart. Now, don't you worry. I'm going to show it to you when we get out into the car a little bit later and tell you what is so doggone special about that glass jar. Okay, here we have the little uh, canisters made in Germany. I see these quite frequently, and many times with uh, the words in German on the front. Mm -hmm. 1930s, so not a lot of value there. There's the Hall Drip, Brown Drip Sugar Bowl. Boy, I remember how popular that stuff was in the 1970s. And then I thought maybe this was some kind of a bicentennial syrup jug or something. Now that jar caught my attention because of the geometric form. I like it. It's only a couple bucks. Didn't even take the sticker off of the bottom. Uh, yeah, that's going to go in the cart, and I'm going to keep that for future use. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I just like the shape. It looks like something from the 1930s. Okay, let's see. Uh, what's going to happen next? They were uh, jamming the 80s in this store. Okay, uh, the lamp department. Yeah, this was okay. Made of glass. It has a replacement socket. Had kind of a clam broth look to it, but nothing exceptional. This uh, oil lamp base says made in Austria on the bottom. Can you see that? It's kind of unusual. Made in Austria. Oh, I knocked the top off. Oh, you big dummy. Look look at me. Did you see me put the top on upside down? <sighs> How ridiculous. Yeah, you sometimes do stuff like that. There's one of those rock lamps or whatever it is. That's not old. That thing with all the jig beads jiggling on it. Not much in the lamp department. This is okay. Probably something from the 40s, maybe even the 50s, probably the 40s. Mm -hmm. The pottery was okay. The base is a little bit beat up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now, you know I'm attracted to this. I don't need another toaster, but I'm going to buy this one anyway. It's clean, and it will be even cleaner when I finish with it. There are no breaks in the element on the inside. The mica looks good. has a nice cord on it. Two slice toaster, 1940s probably, and we turn it upside down, and it says Proctor Thermostat Toaster, Proctor Electric Company of Philadelphia. I'm going to have to look them up. Oh, you know I'm taking that with me. All right, put it in the cart. And let's see. Now, I'm not going to be suckered into this thing again. Made in Japan. This is supposed to be a whistling teapot. Now, I bought one of these a while ago, and it didn't whistle. There's a hole on the top, and music notes, and a little bird, and when the water boils, it's supposed to, you know, give you a little whistle. Well, the one I had didn't work. <laughs> so I'm not trying it again. Well, it was cute, though. 
Oh, I had one of these before. I think this is from the 50s or 60s. A nice old sort of you know, hot pot, hot plate at the bottom with a crock. Great for baked beans. Oh, that would smell so good. Simmering away. I didn't buy this one. The base was a little, was a little messed up. And I guess I just wasn't in the mood to pay $15 for it. So I left that there. We have not hardly gotten out of the 40s in the last few days. And finally, it's going to stop raining tomorrow. We've had rain for almost uh, four days. We sure have. Now here are all those bags on the wall. You'll notice there's hardly anybody in the store. And that's because it was pouring again. And a lot of folks up here in the Northeast use public transportation. I do too in the city. I use the trains and the buses and the trolleys and the subway and all that quite often. But that's the reason why there aren't many folks here. Uh, two pieces of haul. This one is in the silhouette pattern, which was very popular in the 30s and 40s. Two uh, sort of colonial looking men sitting in a pub or at a breakfast nook. And then here's a piece that I liked even better also by Hall, but that one is missing its lid. So the silhouette piece was not missing a lid, but, you know, it's just $6. Mm, I have to go and look and see how the silhouette pieces are selling these days. I don't know. But it was very popular at one time. Yes, I see that Pyrex down there, shaking my finger at it. And let's see, what is that? Oh, that's an old piece of Fire King. Yep, 1940s, you can tell by the handle. Handles on either side. And that yellow color to the glass. It all the early Pyrex, the early glass bake, and the early Fire King all had that yellowish tint. Well, it won't be long, Turkey Lurkey. Take a look at this piece and study it. Mm, not quite the quality of Johnson Brothers, no. So it's, don't think it's English, and it isn't. It's made in Japan, which you'll see in a minute. We'll zoom in. Not a bad piece. It's nice. But uh, the Johnson, it can't hold, really can't hold a candle to Johnson Brothers, in my humble opinion. Their transfer, their, their uh, turkey platters are beautiful. So I left that turkey platter on the shelf. Mm. Uh, let's see. Now this, I just, I saw these little candy corns on there, so... I knew it wasn't old, but I had to pick it up and see what it what it said. And it says pillar candle holder. And then it says oven safe on the back. Something doesn't line up there. Who puts a pillar candle holder in the oven? Maybe that's not what it is. Uh, maybe it's a hot plate. Is that a piece of coin dot up there? I don't think so. This, I had no intentions of buying, but I thought you would want to see it. It's that sort of 60s smoky uh, iridescent glass. There's a Jeanette uh, leaf, also iridescent from the 50s. I, I do see that coin dot there, which was Falstoria. And um, there's that old iris and herringbone marigold. I'm telling you, I see those bowls every time I go thrifting. They're all over the place around here. There's a reamer. Very nice. Some American up there. Faustoria. Or the Whitehall stuff. You have to, have to take a look at it. Uh, I don't buy much American. There's so much of it out there. But I do like these EAPG compotes when they're very tall like that. I think they're elegant. Look at this. You're going to see this later. This has got to be one of the most beautiful console bowls I've ever seen, and it is etched on the top and the underside to give you a 2D uh, uh, dimensional effect. I don't know but whether you can see it. Um, we'll look at it, as I said, when we get out in the car. A lot of work went into this. All hand etched those panels. 
Mm. With all that silver overlay. Yeah, I think I paid $13 for that. Very expensive, and that is a beautiful piece. Don't know who made it, but that that will be up for sale in the old curiosity shop. Yeah, I can't wait for you to have a closer look at that, and it's in good condition as well. Oh, well, there's a Sophia Chia Pet head, I think. A masquerade poodle who has lost his tail and a hobnail vase you just never know what you're gonna find you just never 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 know mm. Okay, first let me get Janis Joplin off the radio because it seems very incongruent with what I'm about to show you. Not that I don't like Janis Joplin. I do. You're surprised at that, aren't you? And I do have some things from the mid-century to show you as well. So, uh, <clears throat> quit wasting time. First, I would love to show you two unmarked, probably made in Japan, mid-century, wonderful 1960s cats. We have a pair of them. They're not salt and pepper shakers. They're a very nice size. Okay, this one is obviously enamored with this one. Then everybody have these on there next to their TV lamp in the 60s. Nice thing is they have not been decapitated. <coughs> there comes that cough again. They've not been decapitated. Their ears have not been ripped off, nor have their tails. They both have tiny tiny now this is a true flea bite when it's about the size of the head of a pin right here okay so just darken that in really would not call those chips but that's my definition of a flea bite the size of the head of a pin or not much larger than that so good condition no marks on the bottom probably made in Japan nice little pair of mid-century cats we're not finished with the cats. I've got another pair of cats for you, mid-century. Ooh. These are marked. Can you guess who made them? Wow. Now here we've got Siamese, the typical Siamese cat with the blue eyes. Again, no chips, no cracks. One of them, one of them has a pin pin size on the top of the ear there might be a pin size yeah I know it's not focusing on the top of that ear if I don't drop these things aren't they fantastic I did not grow up with a Siamese cat but I had a cousin who had one and those are the most talkative things let me, this car is going to steam up if I don't do this. Anyway, these are both signed Maddox of California. We love the flamingos, but the cats are great as well. So there it is, Maddox of California. I went ahead and bought this just because I wanted it. It is in an Art Deco design. Probably a replacement lid. This, I tell you what was excited I knew it was a who I knew it was a glass jar for a Hoosier cabinet now hold on but I was thinking sellers s-e-l-l-e-r-s who had glass for their cabinets and they were usually marked with an s on the bottom how thrilled I was and you can barely see the remnants of the word coffee right there do you see that Boy, was I excited when I turned it upside down and saw, is it backwards for you? Yeah, you got to read it from the inside. And it says on there, well, let me read it to you and then I'll show it to you. It says on there, oh, fudge. Okay. Well, no, wait a minute. Okay. The Hoosier Kitchen Cabinets. Well, it says The Hoosier saves steps kitchen cabinet 
So I'll let you see here, the Hoosier, and that right there says saves steps kitchen cabinets. That was a big deal in the 1920s. This cabinet was gonna revolutionize the woman's work in the kitchen. And when you read the advertisements, it's not just that it's a piece of kitchen furniture, but it will save you time and save steps. That was a big part of the advertising. I have never found a piece that's actually branded Hoosier. Now today, generically, we call all of those kitchen cabinets, the top, the bottom, the porcelain, the coffee grinder, the flour sifter, the tambour cover. We know, we know, but Hoosier made them. That was a brand name, yeah. And at Sellers, Keystone, there are dozens of companies that made those cabinets. Today, we sort of refer to all of them as Hoosiers like we refer to all facial tissues as a Kleenex, which is a brand name. Thrilled Hoosier. A lot of people collect this glass to put back in their cabinets. The fact that this is marked Hoosier bumps it up a little bit. That's the brand name. <clears throat> but the ones marked Sellers are very collectible as well, even in this clear glass. Um, and the screw on lid is missing, you can find them. Now, two more things to show you and we're headed to the next thrift shop. I didn't need another 1930s, 40s toaster, but very clean inside and out. Yeah, the chrome is in great condition. It's not dented. I don't see any breaks in the element. The mica is good. This thing is going to heat up and work beautifully. And then what really excited me, which is different about it, when I turned it upside down, it is hardwired. See the underwriter's knot right there? Rather than the two prongs that stick out and the cord that, that usually is plugged into these. So it's hardwired. But I didn't realize it until I was bagging it. It has a bell. Hear it? Wait a minute. There's gonna be a little ding when the toast is finished on this. And of course, when I saw that it was made in Philadelphia, which was once the workshop of the world, it ain't anymore, it hadn't been for quite some time. But made in Philadelphia, it's called the Proctor Toaster, electronic, electric toaster, made in Philly. I had to get it. It's probably gonna be for sale. As I said, I'm not a toaster collector but I'll clean it up and at some point get it in the old curiosity shop. Look at this console bowl. This was expensive when new. This came from a good gift shop where they sold nice china. This is nice department store glass. This wouldn't give it away at any laundry mat. I can tell you that. I have never seen one as beautiful as this and it's really going to take a piece of black velvet or something to get you to see it. It is etched on both sides, top and bottom, giving it a 3D, is it 3D or a dimensional effect? Let me see how you can tell if you can see, and I know you can't, it's looking probably flat, but this flower is on the front and this lattice work is etched on the back. It's not showing up the way I want it to show up. So maybe when I get it in the house and do a video of it, you'll be able to see 
And then this beautiful silver overlay. This is all hand etched, not acid etched, but somebody sits there with a wheel and an etching tool and they do all of this. This took time to make and it's, it was an expensive piece. Um, uh, paid 13 bucks for it, well worth it. This is just gonna be absolutely beautiful when we see it cleaned up and in proper light and you can really get the effect of the etching on the top and on the bottom. Made by one of the better glass companies of the Depression era. This is gonna go back to the 1930s. Okay, uh, let's keep going. I've got my hot pumpkin spice. I think this is the second one of the season, but ooh, it's only, it's still only about 47 degrees. So I'm gonna have a sip of this, uh, take a little breath here, and then we're gonna go to the next thrift shop. I don't know how long today's video is gonna be, but I need to make up for disappearing for a week. Okay, so stay with me. Ooh, look at this, I've never seen one so small. That is tiny. Is that made for a children, a child? What does it say? Made in, U made in USA. Well, it's old if it's made in the USA. Is that for children? Like a, a toy or do you ever sift little tiny amounts? I don't know. Maybe it's made for little people. I don't mean little people. I, I, well, you know what I mean. I wasn't trying to be. I'm not sure what it was made for. <laughs> There's a juicer, but that's not an old one. No, and I like my electric one. Even though I cut the oranges the wrong way, I just wasn't thinking. I know better than that. You know how you do stuff and you go, duh, why did I do that? There is a made in Japan elephant teapot and it is missing its lid. That would have been fantastic. Yeah, you could still use it as a planter. It's got dirt in it. It looks like somebody did use it as a planter. Yeah. Oh well. Gosh, I wish it had its lid. Well, look, this is the first time I've seen these souvenir glasses from the Centennial. Oops, get it in the frame. The Centennial of uh, the Alamo in Texas. So 1836 to 1936. So these date to 1936. Probably made by, um, this looks like Ritz Blue, Hazel Atlas. And Hazel Atlas did an awful lot of... Uh, collector uh, souvenir glass like this, but they aren't marked HA on the bottom, so they, they could be, or maybe somebody else did it. I don't know. These aren't expensive, but I just don't know how much collectability they have. Uh, and it would take a truckload of barkeeper's friend. No way on those. Now, let's go over here. I see some marigold. Okay, typical little carnival dish. Four dollars. Nothing special about that, but it is, uh, at least it is an old one. It's not one from the 1960s. That's, that's one of those ones from 1910, 1915. So, um, the most common color is marigold. So there's very little value in this, but I might buy it anyway. Now, let me take a look at these plates down here. I can't tell from a distance. I, uh, I'm talking because, boy, they've got Madonna cranked up in here. These appear to be... Well, I don't recognize that. Hmm. They've got ground bottoms on there. Uh, I don't know. Something's telling me that those are not what I think they are, or what I'd like them to be. So, that might be a no. 
but I'll, I'll consider that just to have it. There's a piece of uh, spoke. Uh, did Federal make that? I always get spoke. Yeah, that's spoke. See it in the middle? Uh, in amber. I think that's... Uh, Oh, I don't remember if it's federal or not. There's a whole bunch of paper-thin Noritake down there. I do not feel like messing with that. Ooh. Okay. Oh, there's a nice uh, electric frying pan. I like the colors of... Uh, I like that uh, peachy, peachy pinky color there on the top. I've sold those before. Don't need to pick that up. Uh, but it looks like it's in nice, good condition there. And it's a Hoover. Okay. Okie dokie, let me show you a few more things that I purchased today. I'm not going to show you everything. Uh, you know I like to hold a few things back. Now I found five of these. Of course there were six or eight, but one is broken. But the five that remain are chip-free. Wonderful. And they're green depression glass wine goblets. And they are etched. Now you see, the reproduction stuff, they're not going to etch it. It's too labor intensive. But anyway, um, I don't carry black lights around with me. But uh, I have a pretty good hunch that these contain uranium and they will glow. Not all green from the 30s does, but quite a bit of it will. And you just sort of get, sometimes you get a hunch. I'm fooled sometimes. I'm fooled. But I'm pretty certain that these are going to glow beautifully. Five of these. No chips. Wine goblets. Did I hold it? Did I move it too quickly? I sometimes do that. Look at this. And it says, wait a minute. It says three flowers, toilet water, Richard Hudnut, Hudnut, H-U-D-N-U-T, New York and Paris. Now, I've not looked anything up. Certainly, take a look at that early label. That's definitely a 1920s, 30s style label and sort of a deco top here. In the store, I tried to get this out. I cannot get this stopper off of this toilet water. Surely someone has put something else in here. I don't smell, I don't smell anything. I do see some sediment floating around in there. So who knows? This could have been sealed up in the back of granny's vanity drawer since 1932. I don't know, probably not. But unless I can get that top off of there and somebody knows what, uh, Three Flowers Toilet Water smells like. But that's... I love that label. I know it's blurry. Let me see. Can it... Uh, eh, I'll show it to you again some other time. I paid $5 for that thing. Typical pink mixing bowl. Jeanette Federal Anchor Hocking. You know, they did it. Rolled edge. And then the last thing I'm going to show you today is a pink uh, blown glass with an optic pattern um, cruet. Now, uh, whether that is a replacement stopper or not, uh, I don't know. So, you know, you might think, well, obviously, if it's a pink cruet, it would have a uh, pink stopper, one would think, but, you know, maybe not. It's frosted so that it'll fit down in there or acid at, you know, at, burnt with acid or etched or whatever so that it fits in there nice and tightly. But it is a blown... Am I dripping? No. It is blown and it has this nice optic pattern in there. So it's a nice little cruet and um, with no chips on it. Okay? Okay. So I had a good time shopping today. Well, it's 4.30 in the afternoon, and I left the house this morning at 8 o'clock. So it's time to get indoors and out of this rain. Thanks for watching, everyone, and as always, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. Wait for the cat, and so long for now.